Whether it's the All-NBA revival of AD, the improving pick-and-roll chemistry of LeBron and Russ, or the sophomore development of Austin Reeves, the Lakers are dominating as of this recording. The Purple and Gold have won seven of their last nine games after taking down the fully healthy Bucks. Before going in depth on all of that, just 9.4% of you watching are subscribed, so subscribe if you haven't already, leave a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and follow at DFlowHoops on Instagram and Twitter. Bronny and Bryce are on the come up, but plays like the one on your screen where LeBron rises up for a one-handed rebound like the board man gets paid version of Kawhi, and takes it coast to coast to finish over top of the best shot blocker in the world right now in Brooke Lopez, show us that the near 40-year-old Pops is still and will always be the king of the James household. See y'all later, Mike. LeBron also recreated his iconic poster on Yusuf Nurkic this year, showing us he's still got some monster ups, just like Bronny. With all the mileage that James has racked up, a 20-year time frame in which he's infamously gone to eight straight finals and scored the most points of all time between the regular season and playoffs, it's incredible that he's still chugging along as he is. LeBron isn't the Miami Heat second Cavalier tenure or even the bubble version of himself, but he's still undeniably a top 5-10 to 10 player in the game of basketball, and in terms of his all-time legacy, in my humble opinion, he's currently number 2 behind MJ, but again, James is still carving out his legacy see as hard as that is to believe given everyone in his 03 draft class has retired. We've been saying this for the last half decade plus in his later years, but it's still a true statement. LeBron's playing like he's still got three to four seasons left at the top of his game. Despite being an old man in NBA years, LeBron's posting a league 14th best 25.8 points per night, and he's also top 23 at the very least among players in assists and rebounds. Additionally, among small forwards, James is at the very least top 13 in steals and blocks per night. Speaking of the Kings defense, the man's locking up the perimeter like players around half his age. In defensive rating among three men, LeBron ranks directly behind perimeter clamping 3 and D phenoms in OG Ananobi and Trey Murphy. And in LeBron's second year with fellow MVP candidate Russell Westbrook, these two are finally starting to feel each other out personality-wise, as well as in terms of their playing styles, which showed up in the Lake Show's most recent W against the 2021 championship winning Bucks. Chris Middleton made his return, but that didn't phase the Lakers whatsoever. Russ and Braun combined for 22 assists and zero turnovers, and Westbrook secured his first ever consecutive game of turning the ball over zero times throughout his 13-year career. Pretty incredible. After this stationary and fundamental big body screen from LeBron, George Hill has trouble recovering to Westbrook, so Russ threads the needle for a nifty bounce pass through Matthews and Hill. After this wide dribble handoff, with Grayson Allen slithering around the screen, James slips to the hoop this time, and instead of a bouncer, this time Russ throws a two-handed bullet to James, and while this would have been a dunk a few years ago, let's still appreciate the explosive take to beat three defenders in the vicinity. LeBron's all around just had a fantastic season, and it's sad that just because he is who he is and people expect the world from him. We're not appreciating what he's done so far. Scariest part of all that is LeBron's not even the number one option for the Lakers right now. That would be the 29-year-old former number one pick in the product of Kentucky, Anthony Davis. Back to his all-NBA slash defensive team and three-time block champion-esque self, the brow is absolutely going off right now. He's been shockingly durable this year considering his injury-prone history, and all we can do is knock on wood that Anthony continues to battle through the bumps and bruises. Much love to Davis for fighting through these slight injuries so far, and he's got to keep doing a solid job of avoiding them as best as he can, but at the same time playing smartly physical with his well-developed muscular frame, which has led him to make the all-star team eight times throughout his outstanding career. For now at least, let's give credit to Davis for leading the NBA in rebounding and overall posting a beastly double-double of 26 and 13. Davis continuing to play at an MVP level makes these Lakers a legitimate playoff team. AD's coming off a beastly game against the Bucks where he posted 44 points, 10 boards, 4 dimes, and 4 blocks. Davis is showing that he's producing like a mix of the player that torched the association in the bubble, combined with the player who played with a joyous passion for the game in his early years the Big Easy with the Pelicans. In LeBron's 20th campaign, LA desperately needs to make the playoffs, which is why so many fans still want them to trade for Buddy Heald and Miles Turner. Hillbilly Kobe in sophomore Austin Reeves is displaying that the Brow, Braun, and Russ could have enough support after all. 
Austin's become LeBron's favorite young player on the roster and a top fan favorite, but don't get it twisted. Despite the 2011 Justin Bieber flow, this boy can hoop. In terms of his scoring, of course he's not a star player, but Reeves is efficient from about every spot on the court. He's shooting a stellar 73.9% on shots from less than 10 feet, an above average 48% on pull up two point shots, and an elite 39.2% on catch and shoot attempts. Austin's an excellent energy guy on both ends with his off-ball awareness offensively and intense laterality defensively. Compared to his rookie year as a second-year pro, Austin's averaging career highs across the board statistically. That development's huge for the Lakers system, and overall, it's a luxury to have Reeves next to Westbrook off the bench and to back up Pat Bev and Lonnie Walker. Not only did heavily scrutinized GM Rob Palenka pick up Beverly and Lonnie Walker this offseason, but the pickup of combo forward Troy Brown Jr. is also paying off. Former Chicago Bull TBJ is one of the most versatile wing stoppers in the association. Decent three-point shooter as well. How about the fact that LA has a guard big man tandem off the bench of Dennis Schroeder and Thomas Bryant? I like the makeup of this Laker team and they could easily be a playoff squad if they keep up the tear they're currently on. Coach Darvin Ham evidently has the ear of LA's locker room and has done a solid job so far as a rookie head coach. What's been most impressive about the Los Angeles Lakers over this nine game stretch and can it last? Best answer down below in the comments gets next video shout out and the top five commenters by December 21st earn free merchandise of their choosing. Today's speaks winner is Kent Saludo who says if Aiton wants to reach Jokic or Embiid caliber, he needs to learn how to use his body. He needs to bully down defenders and finish. His hook shots are elite, but he tends to only use that as the only move, then settle too much in the mid-range. He needs to be more dominant and assertive. Lastly, he needs to stay consistent because Embiid and Jokic are stars, and you need to be the best every night if you want to be on the same tier as those two centers. Great take, and thanks for watching.